Thank you very much, Chairman. I'll keep my eye on your hammer. Uh, I've jotted down four points, four points where the European Union has made life very, very difficult for us to have enough protein. And the top of that list has to be fish meal. Even if, as I am speaking, a North Sea skipper will be taking aboard a haul of fish and he will have to throw most of them back into the water dead because of the rules. All those fish should be coming back and be used as a protein source for animal feed. I support Mr. Yar with what he had to say about meat and bone meal or, or slaughterhouse waste. There is no reason why a chicken can't eat the remains of a pig or the pig can't eat the remains of a chicken. As he said, we have to incinerate them. I'd like to go one stage further, though, and remind the committee that the bones used to be a valuable source of phosphate fertilizer from which you could then grow a legume crop. That all has to be destroyed as well at great expense. So deregulation here is essential. The third way the EU has made life difficult for itself, and I had a delegation of Romanian farmers into my office, and I'm sorry that the Romanian vice president isn't here to hear this. They told me that before they joined the European Union, they grew GM soybeans successfully and they got on very well with them. They were told that if Romania wanted to join the European Union, the farmers would have to stop growing GM soybeans. And so they did. They grew non-GM soybeans and they failed. So that's more protein loss to the European Union. Finally, we don't make things very easy for the companies who try and produce the pesticides, etc., for any new protein crops. Legislation has been passed by the European Union to base uh, the criteria on whether these things are acceptable or not on hazard rather than risk. If you take all these four points together and act on them, you would have enough protein. Thank you.